Welcome back to another video. Dr. Mike Hansen here. And in this one, we're gonna talk about the top 10 foods for probiotics. Probiotics are live bacteria. You could think of the 100 trillion bacteria that live in your gut as either being good or bad. The more good bacteria, the better, and there's multiple reasons for this. The good bacteria in your gut are there not only to keep your bowels healthy and happy, but they also have an indirect benefit to every other part of your body, including your heart and your brain, and it can even affect your mood. But there is a catch. In order for the good bacteria to thrive, they need prebiotics, aka fiber. And you need both types of fiber, soluble and insoluble. Most of us don't get enough fiber, especially the insoluble fiber. And when we don't eat enough of that fiber, guess what happens? The bad bacteria start to overtake the good bacteria and that causes all sorts of gut issues, including leaky gut with subsequent inflammation in the body. And when those bad bacteria take over, we need to repopulate our gut with the good bacteria and that's where probiotics come in. But those probiotics are only good if you also consume prebiotics, fiber. In fact, in this scenario, you only need a day or two of eating probiotics as long as you get enough fiber which means you have to eat mostly unprocessed food. In fact, probiotics are much like planting seeds in a garden. They're only going to grow if you nurture them properly, and you don't need to keep adding seeds to the garden once it starts growing. So if you need to jumpstart your gut health garden with probiotics, here are the top 10 foods that contain them. I'm not a fan of soy, but there are probiotics in some soy products, like natto, not nato, and tempeh. Miso is a Japanese seasoning traditionally made by fermenting soybeans with salt and a type of fungus. Miso is also a good source of fiber, protein, vitamins, and minerals. The term buttermilk actually refers to a range of fermented dairy drinks. The two main types are traditional and cultured. Traditional buttermilk is just the leftover liquid from making butter, and this is the buttermilk that contains probiotics. That's why it's also called grandma's probiotic. Now, unless you're living in India, Nepal, or Pakistan, it's going to be hard to get traditional buttermilk. Sauerkraut is finely shredded cabbage that's been fermented by lactic acid bacteria. Now, in addition to having probiotics, it also has lots of fiber, vitamin C, and K. Sauerkraut also contains the antioxidants lutein and zeaxanthin, which are important for eye health. Make sure the sauerkraut is unpasteurized because pasteurization actually kills the live and active bacteria. One of my favorite probiotic foods are pickles. Pickles are cucumbers that have been preserved in a solution made of salt and water. They're then left to ferment over time using their own lactic acid bacteria, which gives them their sour taste. They do tend to be high in sodium, but they're a good source of probiotics. Just know that pickles made with vinegar don't contain live probiotics. Kombucha is a popular fermented black or green tea drink. The main issue with kombucha is that most of the drinks being sold have added sugar, which is best to be avoided. In general, adults should not consume more than 25 grams of added sugar per day. The less, the better. Kimchi is a fermented spicy Korean side dish with cabbage usually being the main ingredient. It contains the lactic acid bacteria Lactobacillus kimchi -e, as well as other lactic acid bacteria. Yogurt is one of the best sources of probiotics. Just keep in mind that not all yogurt contains live probiotics because in some cases, the live bacteria have been killed during the processing. So make sure you buy yogurt with active or live cultures and get the kind that doesn't have any added sugar. It's not gonna be the best tasting yogurt, but it will be the healthiest. And you can always eat it with something else, like you could put it in a bowl with nuts, seeds, and fruit, or put it in a smoothie. And if you don't wanna do yogurt, there are alternative types of yogurt, like coconut yogurt, and there's also cashew yogurt. And now to number one. Kefir, or is it kefir? Kefir is a fermented probiotic milk drink made by adding kefir grains to cow's or goat's milk. So kefir grains are actually cultures of lactic acid bacteria and yeast that look a bit like cauliflower. It's actually a slightly better source of good bacteria compared to yogurt with its several strains of the friendly bacteria. Now like yogurt, kefir is generally well tolerated by people who are lactose intolerant. Just remember that probiotics are essentially useless unless you maintain the garden by eating enough insoluble and soluble fiber, about 30 grams per day. Your gut will automatically allow for those good bacteria to thrive within two days. And at that point, there's really no need to continue to eat further probiotics, although it's not gonna hurt. Thank you.